Good afternoon everyone, hope you all are fine. My name is Romana Ali and I am a biological science teacher. So today I am going to teach a lesson to the 9th grade and the name of the lesson is cell, its structure and function. So as I said you that the lysosomes are uh, the cell organelle or the tiny particles which are present in the cytoplasm contain some destroying or the destructive enzymes in it. These destructive enzymes cannot come in contact with the rest of the cells because it carried by the cell organelle called lysosome. Here you can see these tiny particles in the cytoplasm. So the materials uh, which need to be destroyed are transported to these lysosomes and the enzymes which are present in these lysosomes are uh, damaging that particular material and digested the uh, material which are sent or which are transported to the lysosome. So the lysosomes are playing an important role when the cell gets damaged or destroyed and if, uh, if they need to be digested then uh, the cell gets digested by the lysosome therefore they are also called as the suicidal bags of the cell. They contain damaging or the destructive enzymes and these uh, enzymes help in digesting the materials that are transported by the other uh, cell organelles. Let's study about the other cell organelle that is mitochondria. Mitochondria is also called as powerhouse of the cell. The word in general power means uh, in our houses we use power, uh, the word uh, we use power for electricity. So we need electricity in order to work with the electric appliances and the electric appliances can be worked only in the presence of electricity. Likewise in our cells uh, many reactions, uh, cellular activities are taking place with this power which is generating within the mit mitochondria. So the mitochondria helps in generating the power that is energy in the form of ATP. Here ATP is an energy packed molecule which helps in carrying out the metabolic activities as well as the cellular activities in our body. And when we talk or when we read or when we play or when we do the other activities, uh, the contraction of the muscles occur. So this contraction needs ATP. This contraction needs energy in the form of ATP. So here ATP is nothing but adenosine triphosphate. This is an energy packed molecule which is required by our body for physical as well as for chemical activity. Now let us see the structure of mitochondria. Mitochondria is a membrane bound organelle and the structure of mitochondria shows the two membranes. The first is outer membrane and the second one is inner membrane. The outer membrane is porous in nature whereas the inner membrane shows some foldings and these foldings are called as cristae whereas the space between these foldings is known as matrix and this provides the surface to carry out the uh, metabolic activities and the cellular activities. The function of mitochondria is as I said you that it helps in generating ATP. So when we take food, that food is getting converted into energy and that conversion is taking place in the mitochondria. Therefore, it is known as the powerhouse of the cell. And ATP is known as the currency of a cell because it is required to carry out the physical as well as the chemical activities in our body. So ATP is a currency of a cell. This is about the mitochondria. And we can see the different shapes of the mitochondria. The mitochondria may be oval, cylindrical, spherical or comma shaped. And it shows some distinct features like their own ribosomes and its own DNA, genetic material. So as it possesses its own ribosomes as well as its own DNA, it can synthesize its proteins in itself. Now let us see about plastids. Plastids can be found only in the plant cells. Whereas in animal cell it is absent. So plastids are mainly divided into three types. They are chromoplast, leucoplast and chloroplasts. Here chromo means colored. So the name itself suggesting that the uh, plastids which are uh, colored or which imparts the color like red or blue or orange are termed as uh, chromoplast. For example, we can see the red capsicum, so that red color is due to the presence of chromoplasts. The next one is leucoplast. Here the leuco means white or we can say colorless. So these colorless 
are also called as storage plastids. Why they are called as storage plastids means it stores oils, fats and other substances in it. Hence they are also called as storage plastids. The next is chloroplast and it is very important type of plastid. This chloroplast is present in green parts of the plant and it has a green pigment called chlorophyll. This chlorophyll is responsible for imparting green color to the leaves or to the other parts of the plant. This chlorophyll acts as a or uh, the primary function of the chlorophyll is it traps the energy from the sunlight and convert that energy into the chemical form to carry out the process called photosynthesis. So in simple words we can say that chloroplast helps in carrying out the process called photosynthesis in plants. Let us see the structure of plastids. As mitochondria it is also a membrane bound organelle and it shows outer membrane as well as inner membrane. The inner membrane shows some stacks or the coin like structure which are called as grana and these grana are embedded in the material called troma. So it is a membrane bound organelle it shows two membranes outer membrane as well as inner membrane. The coin like structure or the stacks are called as grana whereas the grana uh, granas are embedded in stroma. So this chloroplast helps in carrying out the photosynthesis. Now we will study about the vacuoles. Uh, the large size vacuoles are present in the plant cell whereas the small size vacuoles are present in the animal cell. In plant cell 50 to 90 percent of the space is occupied by the vacuoles and the, uh, these vacuoles are fluid filled sac like structures which are small in size in animal cell and they are large in size in plant cell. These vacuoles consist of or these vacuoles are made of simple sugars and other substances and they are filled with the cell sap. The functions of the vacuoles are it provides rigidity and the turgidity to the cell. Your rigidity is nothing but stiffness. So the function of the vacuole is it provides the stiffness or the turgidity to the cell. So as we have discussed about the cell and uh, the parts of the cell and also its functions. So now one question came in our mind that are cells flat? So usually when we observe the cell under the microscope uh, we find or uh, it seems that the cells are flat and the cell organelles are arranged in one plane. But this two dimensional structure of the cell is not, uh, I mean the cells are not uh, occur in the two dimensional or the flat shaped. So these are the three dimensional structure, the cells are the three dimensional structure, they are not flat. How can we observe the three dimensional structure of this cell? So the cell shows length, breadth and even the thickness. We can observe the length and the breadth of the cell easily under the microscope but we cannot observe the thickness. Uh, some of the easiest method to observe the thickness are we can uh, slightly change our position or slightly uh, uh, see at the cell wall while observing the cell then we are able to see its thickness and the other way is by decreasing or by reducing the intensity of the light we can clearly see the thickness of the cell and the three dimensional structure of the cell. So from this we came to know that the cells are not flat. It has length, breadth as well as the thickness. The thickness we can see the thickness of a cell by reducing the intensity of the light. Our last topic in this lesson is where do cells come from? We know that the cell is discovered by the scientist Robert Hooke and the cell theory is proposed by the two scientists named Scladin and Squan. So this cell theory explains that all living organisms are made up of cells and each cell contain or each cells have the nucleus in it. But this cell theory did not explain that from where do the cells come from. So 
the scientist named Carl Virchow modified the hypothesis of the cell theory and he explained for the first time that the new cells come from the pre-existing cells. When the division of the pre-existing cells occur, we, uh, they can produce the new cells. So, the new cells are forming from the pre-existing cell. Carl Vichow gives a final shape to the cell theory and this cell theory is depending or is depending upon the two cardinal principles. The first principle is all living organisms are made up of cells and the product of cells and the second principle is all cells can be produced from the pre-existing cell. So, there are the two principles uh, of the cell theory that the first one is all living organisms are made up of cells whereas the second principle is all cells can be produced from the pre-existing cell. Uh, division of the pre-existing cell occur the new cells are produced. Now, let us have a glance on all the topics which we have covered in this lesson cell its structure and functions. So, we have already discussed that the cell is a basic structural and the functional unit present in all the living organisms. The next is typical cell. The typical cell, the model which represents all the cell organelles in a cell. Next is about plant cell as well as animal cell. In plant cell, we can see cell membrane, cell wall, cytoplasm, nucleus and other cell organelles. Whereas in animal cell, the cell wall is absent. Now, let us see what, do you, uh, what is the meaning of cell membrane. Cell membrane, as I said you that it is the outer covering present in the animal cell whereas this cell membrane covers or the bounded by a thick membrane called cell wall in the plant cells. This cell membrane helps or supports the plant and it also protects the plants from the outward pressure. The next is cell wall. Cell wall uh, is found only in the plant cell. It is the thick and the rigid membrane and this membrane is used for uh, supporting the plant cell and it also protects the uh, plant cell. Here uh, cell membrane is also called as the plasma membrane as well, as well as the selectively permeable membrane. As we have already discussed that it is known as plasma membrane because it covers the plasma whereas it is known as the selectively permeable membrane because it uh, permits only the suitable substances to enter and uh, suitable or the selective substances to move out. So, the movement of the substances in and out of the cell is uh, regulated by the cell membrane hence it is called as a selectively permeable membrane. Now, the next is cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is a fluid present in both uh, animal cell as well as in the plant cell and this fluid uh, provides the medium to all the cell organelles. Uh, therefore, the all the cell organelles floats in this fluid. It also provides the nourishment to all the cell organelle uh, as it contains the minerals, ions and the water in it. The next is nucleus. It is a very important and the dark body of a cell. It contains the genetic material called DNA in it and the, nucle uh, the uh, genetic material DNA is present in the nucleoplasm which is a fluid in nucleus. Nucleus helps in transforming the genetic information, it, uh, it contains the genetic information and it also controls all the other cell organelles therefore, it is called as a controller of the cell or the head of the cell. We have already discussed about the important cell organelles, the cell organelles are nothing but which are present in the, uh, the inner parts which are present in the cell. This is, so, the first one is endoplasmic reticulum, this endoplasmic reticulum shows the network of the tubes and the sheets. And this endoplasmic reticulum is divided into two types, smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum do not possess ribosome on its membrane whereas the ribosomes are attached to the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum which is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum. It provides a surface to the ribosomes so the ribosomes can synthesize the protein. So, the protein synthesis occurs at the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the next one is Golgi body which is also called as Golgi apparatus. Here, uh, this Golgi apparatus is found in both plant cell as well as in animal cell. Golgi body uh, shows that uh, the protein synthesis which, uh, uh, which occur in the ribosomes are transport or transferred to the Golgi body and it alters that substances and also it helps in the packaging and the transportation of that material to the other cell organelles. Next, the material is transferred from Golgi body to the lysosomes. Lysosomes are the tiny particles or the tiny cell organelle which are present in the cell, which are present in both plant cell as well as in animal cell. 
these lysosomes carry some destroying and the destructive enzymes in it. When the cell wants to destroy the uh, material, the material which need to be destroyed are transferred to these lysosomes and the lysosome digests that material with the help of the enzymes present in it. The next is ribosomes. Ribosomes are the tiny and the small particles which are present or which are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes help in the protein synthesis and also in the synthesis of other material. The next is mitochondria. Mitochondria is also called as the powerhouse of the cell as it helps in the generation of power. When we eat food, the food is converted into the energy and that energy is uh, and that conversion takes place in the mitochondria in the form of ATP. ATP is nothing but a currency of a cell which helps or which is required by the human body in both physical as well as in the chemical activities. The next is plastids. These plastids are also present only in the plant cells. We can see the plastids only in the plant cells. Plastids are absent in the animal cells. And we can see that there are the three types of the plastids. They are chromoplastids, leucoplasts and uh, chloroplasts. Uh, chromoplast is nothing but the colored one and leucoplast are the colorless one. Whereas the chloroplast is very important which are present in the green parts of the plant. It contains the green pigment called chlorophyll and this pigment imparts the green color to the leaves and, the other, uh, and to the other parts of the plants. The last one is vacuoles. Vacuoles are the sac like structure which are large in size in the plant cell whereas these are small in size in the animal cells. These fluid filled sac like structures helps uh, in the uh, health in providing rigidity as well as turgidity to the plant cell. So with this we have completed the lesson cell its structure and functions.